Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today we're talking desktop capturing using Open Broadcaster software. Okay, so if you're already familiar with Open Broadcaster software or OBS for short, then this probably isn't your video because you probably already know how to do this. So you can go ahead and move on, that's okay. However, if you're new to desktop capturing and you want a nice free and flexible piece of software to be able to capture videos for tutorials or walkthroughs or something like that, then this is your video because I'm gonna show how to capture your desktop using OBS as well as how to capture your desktop's audio, as well as hooking up a microphone so you can capture your voiceover or maybe something else going on in the room. And then a neat little trick I like to use to be able to capture your video for your desktop capture and then capture your audio for your voiceover on separate devices, such as a field recorder. So let's take a look at OBS. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is actually get the OBS software. So the easiest thing to do is just Google search OBS and it's going to be the first result. So click on that and then just click download and boom, your download's ready. So save it to your computer. As Soon as it's done downloading, then go ahead and install it. All right, once you get the software downloaded, then you're gonna wanna open it up. So just double click on your little icon there and you're gonna be dropped right here. Now this screen can be a little intimidating if you've never used the software before. And it's gonna be set up for streaming by default because obviously it's open broadcaster software. So it's trying to broadcast something. That's not what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna actually be setting it up to save to your computer so you can do desktop screen capturing. So you need to change a few settings to get there. The first thing you wanna check is make sure that it has created a scene called scene, which it should do by default. If it doesn't, just click add scene and then it'll pop up a window and just hit okay. Next thing you need to do is go in here to settings and what you're gonna to wanna to do is jump down here to broadcast settings. It's going to be on live stream by default, but you wanna change it to file output only. Now mine's already set to my default save location, which is my secondary drive in my video folders in a folder called captured. And then showing that it is going to name it screen capture. Now for every new capture you take, it's just gonna add a number after that. So screen capture, screen capture one, screen capture two, and on and on. You can also set your hotkeys here. So you got your streaming hotkey and your recording hotkey, but you can also just hit it from the window as well. So that's how I usually do it for at least for desktop capturing. The other thing you wanna go in and check, and you're gonna to wanna to save changes to that. Uh, make sure your video adapter is selected. So in my case, that's the uh, GTX 780. And this is very important. Take a note at whatever monitor you're capturing, you wanna make sure that this matches that resolution. If it doesn't, your mouse pointer is not gonna land on the things that it should and things are gonna look a little bit wonky. So make sure that's set. In this case, 1920 by 1080 is correct. So that's what we're gonna go with. I like to keep it at 30 frames per second. The reason I like to do this is when I go into Premiere and I'm editing in my timeline, I have a 30 frame per second timeline. That helps me be sure that I'm not losing frames and the audio isn't getting out of sync, which can happen. Then for encoding, this is gonna vary from system to system. So uh, I have used Quick Sync before. It's not an option right now because I actually do not have the onboard, uh, the IGP, the integrated graphics processor on my i7 chip enabled. Um, I'm only pointing to my 780. If you do have that turned on, you can use Quick Sync. It's real buggy for me though, at least it was in the latest version that I used. So I'm actually going with my NVIDIA cards onboard capture, uh, which they're calling NVIDIA NVENC, uh, or you can just use software H.264 if neither one of those things is an option for you. I set it to continuous bit rate. I use about 8,000 kilobits per second, and then the audio should just default to AAC uh, 48 kilohertz, which, you know, 128 bit rate, all that's fine. Audio doesn't need to be earth shattering here. We're just doing a desktop capture. So once you have all those things set, you can go ahead and hit OK. Then you need to add a source. So you're gonna to wanna to click Add, and then you're actually going to be doing a monitor capture. So you're gonna to wanna to click on that, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it on Monitor Capture. You do wanna capture the mouse cursor, if that's something you wanna do. If not, you can turn that off, and then just hit OK. So the next thing you can check is you can preview your stream, and it's gonna show it's recording this window over here. Well, I don't want it to record that window. I want it to record this window. So you need to go in and edit your scene. So I'm gonna stop preview, go in here and go to properties and switch it to monitor two. Now, if you don't have a dual monitor setup, you don't have to do this. It'll default to your main screen. But if you get it, you know, you have two, mon two monitors and you're going, oh, it's not capturing the right screen. Easy fix, just change it. Preview it again, boom, there you go. Now you have this kind of tunnel effect here where it just goes on to infinity. But now this is what you're gonna capture when you're recording. Now you'll notice my mouse pointer is actually landing on the correct things. 
if you look in the main window and then you look at the preview window. You want to make sure that's happening. Happening. Happening? I think we just made up a word. Happening, happening and capturing. So you want to make sure that that is happening because that does show you set the correct resolution. All right, so that's great. You've got everything captured. Now the question is, all right, cool. Is it going to capture audio? Well, here's how to find out. So down here, this is going to be your Windows audio capture. So if you're wondering if that's working, just kind of ping a window sound and see if anything comes up there. So go ahead and preview again. And you can see that it is capturing that just like it's supposed to. Now you'll notice here over on microphone, the only thing it's capturing is the noise floor. <laughs> so it's not actually capturing the mic. You have a couple different options here if you want to do that. You can either use an external microphone like an external USB mic or you can plug in a microphone. Now you may have to change a few settings though. So you're going to go back in your settings and then go over to audio and you're going to have your default desktop audio device. You can most of the time you can leave this on default. Now for your microphone, this is where you may have to switch things around. So if you're using like a USB mic or something, you may have to switch it over to that in here. It usually will go to default. I actually had to change mine to tell it to look at the microphone input for my Realtek audio device that is on board my Z97 motherboard. So once I do that, I run a little cable, uh, 3.5 inch uh, or 3.5 millimeter cable from that output to the output on my field recorder because I can use that as a microphone. So we'll go ahead and close out of here, make sure, you know, once that's all set correctly. And we'll do the preview stream again, except this time what I'm going to do is actually plug in the audio cable and show you what that looks like. Okay, so now you can see in the preview, it's picking up my voice. So this is really nice. So what this essentially is doing is I'm using the monitoring feature on my field recorder to use that as a way to capture the audio. So the reason you would want to do this uh, where it's really helpful is if you're maybe uh, editing, like I did a video where I was showing how to edit and post in Premiere. Now this is really handy if you're doing that because it was playing back both Windows audio and I wanted to capture my voice and trying to sync those two things up exactly can be a little bit difficult. However, I found that the sound quality you get at least from my onboard audio recording through a microphone does suffer a little bit compared to just recording off a field recorder. But let's go ahead and do a capture just to show you an example of how this would work. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start recording. So now it is actually recording my desktop as well as my voice. And I can minimize that. And then let's go ahead and play a video. So we'll just play, play the free NAS build video. I'm Chris and today we're building the free NAS box. Right, so so you can see it's capturing both me out. talking through Windows Audio quite a while. as and well as my microphone. Storage as I'm using at this point in time with all the videos and everything else that I'm doing. So that's one way to do it. You do have other options though. So we'll go ahead and stop recording and I'll show you that that did actually dump that file into videos, captured, and it called it screen capture. So now it is actually recording my desktop as well as my voice. And I can minimize that. And then let's go ahead and play a video. So we'll just play, Hello, play the free NAS build video. So you can see it's capturing both me talking through Windows Audio as well. All right, so one thing you may want to do is if you are actually playing back a video like that, you could hear that it was creating a little bit of an echo because it was picking up both sound sources, the microphone as well as the Windows audio. So you may want to actually go in and mute your audio while it's playing back a video. If you're going to have something playing for a while, you can just click on it and it'll mute it and then you can unmute it when you're ready to jump back in. This is particularly helpful if you have two monitors because you can move this OBS window onto your secondary screen and then you can control everything without having to pull it up and actually show it on the screen capture, which is really nice. Now, another trick that I like to use, and I do this one a lot, is if I don't want to run the cables from my field recorder to the computer and plug into the microphone jack and go through all that stuff, I just want to do a quick desktop capture, and I don't need it to be really meticulous about being exactly on point. And maybe I'm using my AKG Phantom Power, you know, really nice voiceover microphone, and I know that I'm going to lose some quality by going in through the OBS software, going through my microphone jack on the computer. I can say, all right, I'm going to bypass doing it that way, and I'm just going to record directly into the field recorder, get the best quality sound I can, and then sync up and post. And there's a really easy trick I like to do for making that extremely easy to do, and that is to just get real quiet for a second, get the mouse pointer right up near the top of the screen, 
And let's preview streams to see what it looked like. And then I do this. Marker. And you notice what I did? I jumped the cursor to the top of the screen at the exact time I said marker. And I was quiet right before and right after I did it so that I'll be able to spot that spike in the waveform wave when I'm in Premiere. And then all I got to do is scrub the video to right when this happens, make sure that marker is said when that happens, and boom, I've got a very rough audio sync. This is kind of the equivalent of clapping when I'm on camera to do the audio sync that way, except it's doing it in a more visual way since Windows isn't actually making any sounds for me to sync up with the field recorder itself. So this is a nice little cheat for if you want to just bypass doing the audio capture through the software. It's a little bit more work, but I mean, not really. And for me, it's a lot easier and just a lot more convenient because I have better control over how my audio is actually going to sound. So there you have it, desktop capture using OBS as well as capturing audio from various audio devices. You have tons of flexibility with this open source software package. We only just scratched the surface of what you can do with OBS, but I do find this to be the easiest way to do desktop capture because once you have it set up, it's super quick and easy to just get it up and running and get your work done. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. You know what? Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.